Hey guys, what's going on? Belton here. Um, just a follow up to the previous video that I made. Uh, again, the the level of discourse I think in that video was more one of uh, exploratory fashion and just sort of explaining how things work. Uh, obviously, that has ruffled quite a bit of feathers because uh, quite a bit's happened as a result. Um, you know, somebody posted a Reddit thread uh, essentially, um, you know, discussing the contents of that. Um, as a result, uh, TFT went on to ban every single person that commented or said anything in my discord. Um, th these are people that, uh, you know, did nothing at all. Uh, no, no infractions. Uh, I've roughly a hundred people now, uh, have been banned simply for being members of my discord. Um, again, without breaking any rules, uh, to terms of service. Uh, as well, I was just told that anyone who is a patron of me has also been banned from TFT. So anyone who has chosen to financially support me, uh, speaking of which, thank you very much for those of you who have, uh, I do appreciate it, uh, especially cause I've been deplatformed pretty much everywhere else as a result of all this stuff. Um, so yes, TFT went on to ban everyone on my discord, um, that is talking actively. I actually started giving people a blue text roll, um, just so you could kind of illustrate. And if you go through chat here. You can see the people that are red and yellow are patrons, but they are also very likely. Um, <clears throat> just to kind of illustrate somewhat the absurdity of this, uh, there are roughly, I think, 3,200 people. Uh, let's see here. Server profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 3,200 people in this Discord. Um, to put that into some context, there are... 25,000 people playing the game at a 25 hour peak. Uh, there are usually about 1100 people online in my discord. Maybe half of them are playing POE. So we're talking about probably somewhere between five and 10% of the player base, uh, you know, at certain points uh, are people that are in that channel just that are there because they want to get some help or some tips on making currency. These are people completely unrelated to uh, the situation as it's unfolding, obviously. Um, the narrative around this has kind of developed or devolved into one where people are juxtaposing myself on one side and TFT on the other. Um, and I want to address that too. Uh, in this video, I, I am going to actually go over evidence to support my claims from the previous video, uh, some of which are basically irrefutable and, uh, you know, following that, we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, the, the narrative that's developed on Reddit around this, uh, one that I can't participate in now because um, when I posted that video, I was actually uh, permanently banned by uh, Reddit. Uh, uh, my Reddit account has something like 30,000 upvotes. It was a top 100 all time poster on, on the Reddit. Um, I've got lots of guides and stuff up there. Uh, I've had some issues with them in the past. I'm not entirely surprised that happened. Um, however, I did try to post screenshots with evidence of the, um, the RMTing that's happening with TFT from people that have done it with them. Uh, the Reddit mods immediately blocked that post, removed it, and then I was permanently banned from PoE, or sorry, from PoE's Reddit. Um, so I'm not afforded the opportunity to speak for myself there. Uh, there's a widely circulating image as well um, that uh, is, is a screenshot of a comment I made on Discord. Um, it has, it, it makes, it, it's some joke. It, people have, are misconstruing this to seem like a, I have been threatening or aggressively pursuing TFT moderators or people associated with TFT. Um, and I'll address that really quickly because right, I think it's just a smoke screen. But essentially when TFT had <clears throat> sent someone to infiltrate my, infiltrate my guild and report back to them, to kind of parody like a funhouse image of this, I started listing off responses to that. Like there were like 10 of them. And again, somebody screenshotted one of them. Um, this was just me shooting the shit in my Discord. Um, and, and again, each one of these replies was like, it was meant to exaggerate the claim, the absurdity of the situation of sending a mole into somebody else's discord. The one that was circulating is me saying, I'm going to find out who this is, trace, th trace that IP, come to your house and shove you in a locker. To me, that, that is very, <laughs> very clearly a farcical comment, um, which was right of, I was watching like nineties, uh, uh, rom-coms and like a common trope in that. You know, in the high school ones, it's like the, the nerdy kid getting shoved into a locker. I, I, I very clearly thought that anyone reading that would, would take that as a joke. But I suppose when it's taken out of context and just screenshot it as a single comment, it maybe seems like 
Um, I'm some psychopathic, maniacal killer trying to hunt these people down. Not the case. Uh, what also wasn't included there was the fact that it was a series of like seven comments. Each one's meant to be more absurd than the last. Uh, a couple of other ones which were, um, I have it on good authority that in 2007, Janubu sexually assaulted a corgi. Um, Janubu is essentially the Jeffrey Epstein of PoE and the people that are on his promoted uh content creator streams are basically like the billionaires and politicians that he brings to his the virgin islands that can't speak out against him now because of what goes on there um what else did we say uh yeah anyways i sorry i can't remember off the top of my head but it was just a serious anyways these are clearly comments that were you know <laughs> they're meant to be they're meant to be jokes and i i guess the the, the tone in which you read them in your own head um is going to dictate how you perceive them but Nonetheless, for argument's sake, I, I really think that the narrative surrounding this does not need to be one where it's me versus them. Um, and I'm willing, you know what, I understand that I have a personality that not really uh, <clears throat> clicks with everyone. So I, I'm willing to just say, you know what, you're all right. If you think I'm a maniac or a psychopath or a bully or uh, whatever, 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 you know, adjective you want to use for the day, um, you're right. Okay, you're right. I will. I, I'm. I, I don't even care what it is. If you want to say something disparaging about me, I'll agree with you. Now let's get back to the point of what these videos are, because, I mean, it's a common tactic in politics. You know, distract, distract. You know, these identity uh, sort of modifiers to to take away from the real point. Um, to kind of illustrate this, uh, because, um, it's uh, it's been sort of funny over the past twenty four hours. Uh, TFT has responded to this not only by banning Google from my Discord. They've also released a series of um, auto replies and news updates on their own website, uh, one of which has become increasingly more and more every time they are adding additional adjectives. Uh, originally, it was Belton is a scammer. Then it was Belton is a homophobe. Um, now it is Belton is a homophobe, transphobic, violent, and constant harasser and an evader. Uh, they have now gone as far as to say that anyone who is in my guild Anyone who is in my Discord uh, is going to be banned from TFT. Uh, and this is the part that I thought was really, you know, quite telling. Uh, <clears throat> you feel free to appeal this ban if you left and you no longer support him. Now, what I find funny about this is no longer support him is not a quantitative metric. Uh, this is one whereby uh, it, it's kind of like saying, you know, you start dating someone new and they're like, I need you to, to break up with your ex-girlfriend. Not only that. But I need you to text her and tell her that she's a whore. Then I'm going to polygraph you to make sure you mean it. It's like, look, I, I get that uh, they want to have, you know, it's easier to control a narrative when people feel like they're losing something. Um, I think that's kind of telling in itself. But, you know, again, I, I, I won't remove any comments that are negative towards me. Because, again, I think that developing these these the dialogues, uh, uh, it's important to see both sides. So I'll present to you what's happened as, as they have, um, and you can come to your own conclusions. I think that says quite a bit, though. Uh, it certainly, on my end, doesn't seem like the act of someone innocent, but that's perhaps my biased interpretation. Um, furthermore, uh, again, on Reddit, uh, the post that has been... I, I tried to post something with the, the evidence that was removed. Uh, TFT um, has had me banned from Reddit before. They've also had me banned from Twitch. Luckily, YouTube is a platform in which they cannot do this. They have no influence here. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure ISIS recruits on YouTube. So if I ever get banned from YouTube and ISIS is able to recruit, I think there's a bit of a problem going on. Um, that being said, uh, <clears throat> let's get into some more of the, uh, the evidence here. Um, I, I think it's important to establish that, first of all, though, uh, because I, 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 I imagine a lot, a lot of people are wondering as well as, you know, what's my share in this, right? Like, what is Belton benefiting? Um, I think a lot of people assume that I have some skin in the game, and I want to clear that up as well. Number one, I, I do not, have not, and will never accept anyone else's items for a mirror shop of my own. I'm not looking to take the services that they have. Um, in fact, I want no part of any of this at all. I think that TFT is a fantastic community tool that has been warped by the mismanagement and, uh, you know, uh, greed of the people running it at the very top. I know that there are a lot of people who are involved with TFT. 
on a lower level, uh, on an organizational level, and especially on the user level that have absolutely no problems with it. And it's a fantastic, fantastic tool. Um, again, it's just that has obviously morphed, morphed into something a little bit more sinister on, 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 a, on a higher level. But by no means does that discredit everyone, uh, you know, that uses it or that is involved with it. Um, and I, I hope that is clear. When I say TFT, it's just I don't mean every single person of the 150,000 users is, is an evil, you know, Machiavellian criminal. Um, just as I hope you are able to separate your personal feelings towards me um, or the way that I play the game or, or whatever, you know, perceptions you may have of me uh, with the, the, the stuff I'm presenting to you as it, as it is. Um, another thing. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want TFT's business. I don't want to start a mirror shop. Uh, in fact, if anyone offers me this, I, I just flat out will reject this. Number two, um, what do I actually want to come of this? Uh, I don't have a competing Discord where it's like a trading thing or whatever. The point of my Discord is to discuss tactics, the strategies, and ways in which people can make currency. Uh, it, but it's not a marketplace, right? Sometimes people will trade the odd thing, but it's not set up for that. Um, what I want to come as a result of this uh, would be... Uh, basically three core things I think would be very important. And that is the separation of TFT's mirror services and sort of mirror conglomerate and the community, the community discord. Um, <clears throat> and that would include relinquishing moderation of the community discord to people of the community. So, uh, and they would also have, uh, so what would happen with that would mean like, uh, if you want, if TFT wanted to run a mirror shop where they, you know, uh, People who craft their own mirror items want to give it to them and they have that ubiquity and whatever, that's fine. Um, I, I just don't think that there is the clear conflict of interest lies in where, uh, you know, the people doing that are also able to con control the levels, like the supply chain, basically, that vertically integrated supply chain that happens with all the lower level things, right? Like being able to moderate uh, who can bulk sell, who can access the channel, who can do whatever. Um, and that kind of brings me to the second point that would have to change. Uh, is that they would have to fire every single one of their moderators um, and community moderators would be put in. Uh, the moderators would have a clear server terms of service use that is subject to universal application. Um, so people can get banned from discords. I'm not saying that people don't deserve to be banned at times. Uh, but right now what happens a lot of the time is vindictive or it's subjective. You know, uh, people like Nell specifically will take a grudge on someone um, you know, they'll hear them say like, oh, I don't like, I don't like TFT on a random Reddit post and they'll go and ban that person and everyone they know from using the community tool. Um, so I think that implementing new moderators would be a very important element too, uh, who have clear rules on what are, you know, what would constitute breaking terms of service of using, um, you know, TFT's tool as it exists. Um, as well, there should be an appeal process if you feel like, a moderator has overstepped. Obviously, people are emotional. Sometimes people are, are likely to react, maybe not in the most rational sense in terms of moderation, especially if they feel like they've been personally attacked. Um, and I think having a secondary body to appeal that process to that is neutral um, would be to the benefit of all. Uh, number three, I think that it's important uh, that uh, TFT acknowledges wrongdoing and fault um, and really an abuse of authority here. Uh, I mean, the, the screenshots that I'm going to get into shortly uh, will, will clearly evidence this, but um, I, I think, you know, the community as a whole deserves this <laughs> um, because, uh, you know, with the ubiquity and, and the power that they've been given um, and, and the plentiful opportunity they've had to, to sort of say, to sort of take a step back and be like, look, um, you know, we're working against the the betterment of the whole, which is our intended con or, you know, our intended purpose. Uh, I, I really think that that would be an important element too, uh, if it is to stay in the game as it exists. Um, and the last thing as well is that, um, I, I think that free market should be able to, and you're never going to have no market manipulation in PoE because someone can always just try to price fix on an individual level out of their own stash. Uh, the problem that with, uh, TFT right now is that because their conflict of interest exists, whereby the people at the top, um, obviously want to control material markets to control supply and competition. Uh, they can do things like time out people on bulk selling lists, or they have, you know, the tool where it shows the average price of sales. Uh, they can alter those things, or they can ban people who are certain bulk sellers, or they can message bulk sellers the second that they're posted, 
um, and buy all of their things out if they want to prevent someone from crafting something. Uh, as I mentioned for myself, pretty much every time I've tried to do beast rolling, um, there has been a temporary spike in the price of beasts uh, to you know discourage me from doing so. Um, to the tune sometimes, like a Vivid Vulture uh, will go up from 2.2 divines to 3 divines the second I start trying to do it. And then as soon as I stop crafting it, it'll go back down to 2.2. Um, and <clears throat> But again, this isn't really about me. Um, those are the things that I think would be important for TFT uh, to acknowledge and change. Um, but again, to remove myself from the equation here, uh, I don't want any role in moderating this channel. I don't want any role in implementing who would be picked as moderators of this, uh, I, I think. <clears throat> and uh, I, I don't want any... Like the, the community tool aspect of, of TFT, uh, really, it, again, the onus is pretty much on GGG to either implement this themselves, uh, but if if they're not able to or are unwilling to, and we do continue to use a third-party system, uh, I don't want any role in the trajectory of that, um, you know, how the channels work, how the moderation, these are merely my suggestions, but um, again, I, for the sake of transparency and uh, to absolve myself of any pretense of conflict of interest here um uh, i just i i don't really want anything to do with it um again i'm just trying to provide information to the community as a whole because i think that people are largely misinformed about these things um and need to be uh aware of what's going on uh whether or not people choose to act on that uh that's their decision but at the, at the end of the day um you know i think that uh you have a fairly powerful organization within tft who obviously has pretty wide-reaching um scope within the game uh i've experienced this myself obviously in the past 24 hours in terms of repercussions uh here's a couple other things though uh so one of the, one of the things uh janubu uh somebody sent me this here you can see him saying hey belton and then linking 249 mirrors in league uh you can see here he has four challenges uh so as i mentioned they don't actually play the game. They just sit there accumulating things. Uh, as I also said, that TFT can control the supply uh, or flood the market of mirrors at any given time. Uh, and they do that to distort the prices of things. Uh, so we can just take a look here. And we can see that there's 15 mirrors for sale total. And again, Janu has got 249 of them. Now, one of the things actually that's quite funny about this too, because there are certain elements that they can't distort. Um, when I get to the photos in a sec <clears throat> that very clearly show that they've been RMTing, one of the accusations or one of the assertions that, that is made is that, um, you know, if, if TFT is, is at RMTing these mirrors, uh, you know, they should have thousands of them based on the amount of uh, mirror services they're doing. But if you look at how many they have at any given time, it's usually only like 10 or 15. It's like, well, where are these actual fees going to? The reason why Janubu is randomly linking these in chat to try and show that he has them here is because of this assertion. This is actually released right after I released those photos, uh, the timing stamp here. So what's funny too, is that you can then go and look and uh, you can look on PoE Ninja and from, from the time that I made that post, all of a sudden, a very stable market on mirrors, somebody all of a sudden raised the price of mirrors by 20 divines, 5,000 chaos. Look at that. What? And what's the point of this? Well, while they can do this themselves normally at any given time, the specific reasoning for this spike right here is because they would want to be showing that, hey, we're not actually selling off our mirrors. We're holding on to all of them, right? So that's why the market supply of the mirrors has dwindled so rapidly to the point that there's only 15 of them available right now. And also why you can see here on Ninja that our very stable market has all of a sudden jumped up. <laughs> by 5,000 chaos or 20 divines in a single 24 hour period. Um, these are little things that kind of just, you know, maybe by themselves individually don't say anything, but we're going to paint a picture here that I think is, uh, it's going to become pretty clear that uh, uh, this is what's going on. So now to the bulk of the video, um, <clears throat> we're going to get into uh, to the actual evidence here. So the reason why I didn't actually get into this uh, before, guys, uh, specifically, is because a lot of the people that came forward with different stories or screenshots of things that happened with them, uh, obviously, if somebody is using RMT or is 
providing RMT like items for sale to them um, by them going public with this or by me revealing their names, those people are very likely to be banned from the game. Um, I mean, if GGG has any level of integrity, that would be the case, right? And, um, you know, if somebody is coming forward to me to try and help prove a narrative that, I, you know, or something that I put out in the public sphere because, you know, they believe in the principle of what I'm saying and they, they know about the abuse that goes on the high levels, um, I don't think it's my place uh, without the permission of that person to say, hey, I'm going to ruin your POE career, even though you're trying to inform my decisions already. So... I wanted to make sure I had permission from certain people um, because even though I do want to, you know, it's nice to validate the fact that I am telling the truth here, uh, that I don't have ulterior motives here and, you know, maybe finally get some, you know, kind of not recognition, but the idea that I'm always doing something with, with self-interest or, or ego behind it. And a lot of the spin that TFT puts on things or, you know, the, the what is it, what, what are, are my adjectives today? That I'm homophobic, transphobic, violent, a harasser, and an event. You know, each one of these defamatory statements that keeps getting bigger and bigger by the day. Um, obviously, on a personal level, I would feel vindicated a little bit for people to be like, you know what, he was telling the truth regardless of that. But at the same time, I'm not really willing to compromise my integrity with respect to the trust I have with other people that have come forward to try and help me inform these these kind of uh, this you know videos. So. That being said, I did have a couple of people who eventually were willing to go on the record. Um, and it, you know, surprisingly enough, it was actually because of TFT. Um, in their mass quest to squelch and, you know, uh, quell dissent from anyone, I mentioned that they had come over and been banning pretty much anyone who was associated with me. They accidentally decided to ban the person who has crafted the absolute best item, probably in the game, um, but definitely the best item in sanctum uh, the number one bow in the league and will likely become the number one item in the game you can see here maelstrom knock 1079 pdps oops uh this is the item that tft has on their mirror shop here um <laughs> sorry i can't use the discord obviously so uh, I gotta, I gotta go through the website here. I apologize for the, you know, kind of, I know these videos aren't edited and that a lot of people kind of lose interest in seemingly what is my rambling narratives, but hopefully for those of you that care enough about this stuff actually happening. And I realize a lot of people just don't care at all about this stuff, but that's obviously not who I'm making these for. But for those of you who do care, I, I, I hope that, um, you know, you're not too bothered by, um, you know, the raw nature of these. There it is. So here we go, guys. TFT's own mirror shot. Where the fuck did it just go? Maelstrom knock. The fee being two mirrors. So you have to pay one mirror to mirror it, plus a two mirror fee. This item would account for probably half of the amount, of, like literally half of all the money that they make. Uh, oh, sorry. My face is blocking the thing there. Maelstrom knock. Okay. A two mirror fee uh, and one mirror to copy the item. The owner being reply and plushies. Uh, this reply and plushies, this is Quiddy and Bat Chest in the game. Um, these are the crafters, as you can see here, owner. Uh, this is the item, uh, the number one bow in the league. And uh, this is a perfect synthesis base. You cannot get better, a uh, better, better synthesis than this. Uh, so this is the best bow in the game. Now, in standard, obviously, there's, there's I think there's a couple of those that have higher uh, PDPS. They are not plus three arrow, um, but as well, when this goes to standard at the end of the league, obviously the crafted attack speed, uh, they'll just use eternal orbs to get natural attack speed. Uh, and this will, once that happens, this will actually become the best PDPS bow in the league period or in the game period, not to mention it will also have that. Uh, it will also have the additional arrow there. Um, the, the, again, these are unbeatable synthesis implicits um, and the uh, it's uh, 61. Uh, the one thing that doesn't exist there that some previous bows would have is the uh, quality uh, craft, the hybrid quality craft that used to get from June. Um, but again, because of the implicits, uh, it cannot be beat. But this is, again, the number one, this is TFT's own website, the number one bow in the game. Uh, bows are the most mirrored item in the game. Uh, as you can see here, I've got one as well. 
Um, my mirror fee is obviously not, you know, I'm, I'm up roughly six mirrors now. Uh, I did sell a ring today, actually. I've been rolling a uh, the d double attribute onslaught ring. Uh, you can see I sold that. So we'll, we'll get to some mirror crafts ourselves here soon. Um, but uh, this, this would uh, account for hundreds and hundreds of mirrors on, on TFT's side in terms of generating revenue. Now, the reason why I'm explaining this so much is that, again, the people who crafted this item uh, happened to be a part of my Discord. And TFT, without really thinking, decided to ban the people because they were friends with me. Now, obviously, this was maybe an impetus for these guys to say, you know what, fuck TFT. Because a lot of these guys don't like using TFT. It's just it's really the only system in place to do so. Uh, but since they decided to indiscriminately ban them simply for their association with me, I think it was kind of what put them over the edge and was like, you know what, fuck it, I've already made my money. So, Quiddy, uh, Quiddy, the crafter of the uh, knock, uh, who, as you can see, is still updating me on the situations here, um, he has decided to come forward and uh, with his co-crafter, uh, send me screenshots of when the bow was crafted and what was going on with the sales with TFT here. So we're going to get into that. And we're going to go through here. All right. So I'm going to read them out loud. I have linked these uh, in, a, in the previous video. I linked this in the, uh, the uh, uh, pinned comments. Uh, but uh, some people, I guess, have a trouble interpreting this. So just putting it within context. These are the two guys that crafted, again, Mirror Knock, the number one bow of the league, the one in which TFT is charging a two mirror fee, plus the mirror to copy, best bow in the game, probably the most mirrorable item in the game. So we're going to go through here and go through the, the screenshots that was sent. So again, this is the conversation between the two crafters. Uh, in case the bow is not made by day 12 or 13, there's always a choice to rebuy the currency with the money we get from selling it. It's just that I was, uh, I was suggesting once I played with him. Uh, Quiddy then says, nah, it's too risky. It's not a terrible idea, but I wouldn't bother with it unless you somehow the, add the absolute GG base for cheap. Why bother risking uh, the GG base with RMT currency? And he goes, nah, I'll ask someone to buy it for me, uh, like plushies or reply. Quiddy then goes, yeah, that's not a terrible idea. I would have to see the market. Uh, Cap then goes, Cap, aka Badcast. I'm almost convinced that these people have some someone on the inside. How are they not banned? He's now saying... Um, he's convinced that the TFT guys have someone on the inside of GGG. Uh, Quiddy replies, who? Plushies? And then Cap goes, yeah, with so much selling. Again, saying so much selling of RMT goods. Uh, Quiddy then goes, does Varga RMT? Varga is, uh, by the way, Janubu. Varga was the name he went by by a long time. For a long time, I believe that account was suspended or associated with RMTing. Um, and he rebranded himself, uh, you know, to disassociate with that. Uh, it is, however, the same person. Varga, when they say that, is the Janubu, that the, the head honcho at TFT. Cap then says, of course, Plushies lives in the U.S. where the cost of living is like four to $5,000 a month, and he pays it off entirely on POE almost. Okay, next photo. Quiddy goes, bruh, what is all of that standard, uh, what is all that standard currency? Like mirrors, he has standard mirror fees. Uh, and then Cap says, nothing, dude. They have zero currency on standard. They've all they've sold it all, as in they have RMT it all. Quiddy then says, how does he get that much? Like from all these mirror service fees, correct? Cap says, yes, his bow is like one copy a day. Quiddy says, bro, who is playing standard and buying all this currency? I don't get it. Cap says, uh, which is like a $250 fee, I think, because the fee is two mirrors and 500 divines. What they're talking about right now is the current best bow that exists on standard. What? So they're saying that they're making roughly $250 a day on the current bow on standard. Um, this is these guys again. These are the two that crafted Mirror Knock and they're discussing selling it to RMT, uh, to, RMT to TFT. Quiddy then says, uh, LOL or Keck, uh, I want to know who's buying all of this currency, man. I don't know, dude, is the next reply. All right, moving on. Uh, Cap that goes, TFT will buy only buy all day. When they say buy, they mean with money. Uh, if the league item has potential for standard. Quiddy then says, I mean, if Vulture stay, that would mean potential for standard, correct? And then Cap says, yes, they will. Again, this is when they're discussing uh, the crafting of this best bow. 
Quiddy then says, now nah, that's fair. I've never tried selling super early, like day or, uh, three to online people. I think Expedition, I quit day two and sold my head at 100 for like $190 or something. Uh, and then Cap says, those groups will pay like 350 for a headhunter on day one. And then Quiddy says, yeah, selling to, uh, to TFT is super comfortable though, because that's an established friend. Wow. And when we're grouped with them, he's actually using the currency. You sell to some random dude online and he's dividing that up 40 times, trading to 40 different people. And you have to do this more times every day. The amount of people you're connected to is so high. Again, they're discussing, you know, basically here they're saying the reason why it's great to use TFT is because TFT will buy everything for cash at once. And you don't have to parcel out a bunch of individual sales, which makes it, as I discussed in the last video, much easier to, um, you know, it's, it's much less traceable. Um, Cap then goes, yes, there is no risk if TFT buys it. Again, um, we're talking about the mirror knockbow here. Quiddy says, I mean, I can just play on an alt and we can sell it to them as we get them if TFT is not buying. Uh, again, he's saying if we get mirror fees and TFT is not willing to buy our base, we can, I can just go on an alternate account and sell our mirror fees off or cash as they happen. Uh, Quiddy goes, it's common sense. Anyone can look at how much I make a league and figure it out. I should be sitting on 500 plus mirrors, pure if I did not. Unless you're Bill Gates or something, not RMTing is stupid. PO, you can get PoE clout or like $5,000 US. A cap then goes, I mean, I can directly sell it to TFT people. They'll buy directly from me uh, from day three and onwards. Um, and then Quiddy goes, I would rather do that. Then Cap goes, there is a zero risk of a, a ban and very good rates of uh, per divine. So again, this is the, the discussion. I, again, I'm going to get into more further evidence, obviously. But this is these two guys discussing what they should do with Mirror Knock the bow, uh, you know, prior to crafting it or prior to selling it. Under the, that they're mutually deciding here that they want to RMT this. And they're, you know, both of them have experience. And one is saying the best place to do this is TFT because they will buy it all at bulk. You don't have to take the risk of individually selling off your items or the currency. Quiddy then goes on to say, here are some, some screenshots uh, if you decide to make a video. Um, please be nice and edit out Mr. Cap's name at the very least. He further on tells me that this is no longer required. However, if you saw some of the earlier screenshots I posted, the name was blocked out. I don't care if mine... Uh, keep it or not it doesn't matter tft plan to buy from us uh next league and plusies and pakora specifically if a league has potential a potential item for standard they will rmt guaranteed and you should make a video for reddit asking ggg to look into varga plushies pakora and reply standard tabs specifically call out that they should have pl 500 plus mirrors uh liquid do the math and show how much they would need to show to prove they don't rmt i doubt they even ever have over 15 mirrors liquid now, if you remember, they uh, again, because I posted these images, as I showed you a little bit earlier, um, with uh, <laughs> the immediate price hike in the mirrors here, as somebody decided to buy all the mirrors out, as well as Janubu deciding to randomly link m giant stacks of mirrors in global channels without anyone saying anything. This is the reason why this is happening, because they knew that this was being said. Uh, again, to kind of cover their ass. Uh, they specifically, okay, sorry, Quiddy go, then goes on to say, they specifically plan to RMT this league. I'm 99% sure they just paid Cap and Batchest real life money for his share because they just gave me 15 mirrors liquid with no problems. Uh, I'm incriminating myself, but I don't care. They're fucking cringe. You can leave my name if there's merit to it. They heavily RMT'd into this league. Um, and I, I I'm going to ask you just to make a video asking GGG to look into their account, trade depths a bit more in depth, look at their standard trades and try to pressure GGG. Uh, after he sent me this message again, he was t telling me this before, um, he was getting banned. You can see at this point, he was then banned from TFT. Um, and so from this point on, you know, he decides to divulge more, obviously more specifics because again, they're kind of shooting themselves in their foot. Uh, I say to him, thank you. It's commendable of you to step up like this. I'll keep it on the back burner, depending on how the situation unfolds. You're the several per six person to come forward now with screenshots that has services with them or has an internal understanding of the first hand RNT wise. Quiddy goes on to say, you should make a video while it's hot and pressure GGG into looking more in depth into TFT's operations. Uh, you can show these screenshots. You can use my username and you can say I was a part of it. Their operations, at very least, they let me in on it. Um, I, I think you should leak it, man. I don't care about my account. I I've made $25,000 plus in POE. I just really hate the precedence that TFT sets also bat slash cap 
um, is might leak some insanely uh, insane, absolute, sorry, absolutely insane shit since he's really close with them, but hates TFT as a server. If you put the pressure on GGG, if you put the pressure on GGG to look into their profiles and trading history, GGG will 100% find many things are extremely suspect. Make sure that you pressure. It's very hard to prove RMT is the only person who can is GGG. You need to expose it for what it is. Um, you, uh, they have this whole attitude at TFT like they're invincible. I can tell that they're stupid. Or he goes, I can't tell if they're stupid or if uh, TFT has people uh, inside with GGG. Uh, sorry, discussing some parts of the real life right there. Uh, I just want to make sure I didn't show that in the video. Okay, here's, yeah, all right, back on it. Uh, Quiddy then goes on to say, like, again, we're just talking about, um, you know, what we do in real life for, for work and stuff. It's just, I, I don't want to dox someone. So, uh, Quiddy, uh, this, I too, uh, this too, I don't know if you got this. Cap, I mean, I can directly sell it to TFT people. They'll directly buy from me on day three. Quiddy goes, I'd rather do this. Uh, Cap says, zero risk of ban and very good rates per divine. Quiddy again uh, says, yeah, I'd much rather do that. Um, uh, Quiddy, then they decide, sorry, Cap goes, yeah, I'll ask them. If plushies are reply uh, are buying, I'll do calculations and maybe just sell them the currency uh, for two weeks straight. It, it amounts to the same as us making 40 to 50 mirrors at the end of the month. Quiddy says, yeah, I'll be down for doing that. Cap then goes, how much is the 40 mirrors worth at the end of the month? Quiddy goes, bulk uh, $3,500 to $5,000. It was super hard to find a bulk buyer this league, though. Evidently, GGG cracked down on RMTing Arch Nemesis League, so everyone was scared. And at week one, mirrors are how much? And then Quiddy says 250 So you can see here, obviously, these guys have a history with this. Um, and the reason why TFT is their chosen venue is because again because of the large part of the organization and as i mentioned in the previous video um the amount the sheer volume of mirrors moving through because of all the services when they have this much it's much easier to essentially launder it through tft and get the currency from them in a single go than it is for them to make 50 individual trades uh ba -ba -ba. then goes on to show uh here is the validity of the point if you want further point for my accusations the little 50 mirrors that they sold uh quiddy then goes on to say you can show these screenshots and basically show how uh how quiddy go from 50 mirrors and the best bow base to nothing in the game uh tft founders now have maelstrom knock the best bow in the game that i rolled and the previous mirror bow that i made lol like the math is absolutely <laughs> like the math's absolutely math um uh, and then I said to him, yo, this Reddit narrative, again, I was banned from Reddit and people were making a lot of personal attacks. So I figured, you know what, let's just release this, um, show it is for is what it is. Quiddy then goes on, uh, go for it, edit out the name of Cap. Already wrong for me to share this without his consent, but I can't be arsed to fuck with it. I might message support too to call my account. Just make a video and make it good. And then Quiddy goes on. And again, this is why I decided to make the video now, guys. Uh, it's 3 a.m. At 12.30, he says, Cap says you can leave his name in the screenshots. He hates TFT. Now, why this is super important, guys, and you might be here sitting here and say, well, this is just two guys with mirror services that are saying they sold the TFT. I want to point out again that this is the best item in the history of the game, as well as they have a history of doing this. Um, Quiddy, uh, Cap is the one of the two that typically sells it to them for the currency. Uh, or sorry, sells them to TFT because he has that longstanding relationship uh, for the real money and cat uh quiddy and him are the crafting team um the reason why i wanted to kind of wait on releasing this is because um now that both of them are willing to have their name on public record uh ggg i mean people in the community if you really want further evidence can obviously reach out to these guys but ggg now uh if shown this video uh you have two account names that you can very clearly see um this this transfer of happening with uh, as well as um, as he mentioned earlier, Quiddy mentioned Cap has a long history of RMTing with TFT and he has uh, tons and tons of screenshots and videos and whatever associated with this. Uh, and then I asked him, would you and Cap be willing to sit down and do a podcast type style with me? So I was going to ask them if they just want to get interviewed and discuss how this works with them. Um, and I said, no, I don't want to be on webcam. Uh, and then Cap, and then he says, no, Cap hates everything about the situation. 
Uh, and he says he hates TFT, but he was worried that he was going to be losing a friend. So I just wanted to thank him. Um, and I was like, look, dude, I lost my Twitch Reddit account, part of my livelihood and 8,000 hours of guides and videos, as well as my question, people are questioning my integrity constantly in the past two months. Um, so this situation doesn't, it, it isn't nothing to me. And I appreciate you giving legitimacy to that. Uh, so that's w one situation there, guys. So again, the, the people that crafted the best item in the game, um, this is him saying how they sold it to the people at TFT for currency, the reasons why they did it. Um, and as well, they have a long-standing history now. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think that it's necessary to go through hundreds and hundreds of these. However, if there are people in the community that, um, you know, need further evidence, the names are now public. Uh, and GGG, if you're watching this video, uh, you now know which accounts you can look at for these transactions. Uh, Quiddy, actually, he's continuing to sell me more and more of this. In fact, this looks like, okay, so the people on TFT, this is him showing videos. These are screenshots of people on from TFT uh, arguing with him. <laughs> uh, anyways, again, I, I think the names are out there. The discussion about it is out there. I don't think the specifics of them arguing we need to get into. Um, another one that's important here, guys, this is Jix. Jix was a former uh, uh, officer in TFT. Um, he was one of the moderators responsible for servicing items on standard. Uh, this is him just explaining to me how the hierarchy of TFT works, so how it works internally. This is prior to me making my last video. So he was saying on the, uh, the they've got their people who do the mirror shop managers, uh, the top two ranks, how they work, the hierarchies, basically. Um, I'm asking him why Varga rebranded as Janubu. Um, and he says, Janubu is the name of his dead cat. I assume there was too much drama. Drama, again, being a euphemism for RMT stuff. And then Jix goes, after watching the video where I describe how everything works, he goes, your TFT video was spot on. You could have focused about the fact that Discord started as a way to showcase items to standard players that mirrored a lot from Varga and then was expanded to people regularly spamming mechanics to finish mirror items. And then it was opened up to the community out of gratitude with quotations and a winky face, uh, which is his way of saying that's when money started getting involved. Um, and totally not easier to find your resources. Uh, there is also a TFT mod who is a Reddit mod, as he pointed out, just saying. Um, and again, uh, when I tried to post uh, all, again, I, th there's quite a few screenshots and conversations I've had with people that I tried to release to Reddit. Uh, when I did that, this is what happened. You have been permanently banned from participating in path of Reddit Path of Exile. Uh, you have been permanently banned from participating in Reddit Path of Exile. Sorry, I was trying to... Where's the other screenshot here? <sighs> there it is. And the post. Original crafter of Maelstrom Knock, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, this post has been removed by moderators of Reddit Path of Exile. Um, so this is me trying to provide the evidence of this. Um, and again, it was immediately removed. Uh, and I was permanently banned from Reddit Discord. However, you can see that this thread here, TFT reaching a new low and people are uh, people are they banning people simply for being a part of the Discord for a person they don't like. This is in reference to me. Upvoted 1400 times and the seven, 473 comments. Now, if you go through these comments, I'm not going to address them individually. I would say at least 400 of these are people saying what a piece of shit and bad person I am. Um, I'm not going to lend weight to that. I obviously disagree, but you're welcome to your opinion of me regardless. However, um, it really doesn't have anything to do with the allegations of the previous video or, or anything I'm showing here. Almost nothing has to do with that. Um, and you can see here, we have no association with Belton or TFT. This is from a Reddit mod. Uh, and as we're sold here, there's a TFT mod, Live Jamie, who is also a Reddit mod. So not only are the Reddit mods lying, uh, not only are they removing my post, which actually shows the proof of what they're talking about here, right? So I'm trying to show the evidence. This is just a speculative post, which is largely people shit talking me and, and purely a drama post. Whereas the one I posted was literally screenshots, yet mine is removed and I am permanently banned. Um, whereas this one is allowed to be the number one post on the subreddit, 1400 upvotes, 500 comments, most of which are people look like trying to post this into a faction war, right? There's no faction here. I, I have no I have no dog and horse in this race. I don't RMT. So and again, 
for all the bands that I have on any platform, and guess which one I don't. There's never been a, even a strike on my account. Um, in fact, you know, as the situation unfolds, when I publish this video, I'm willing to leave my stream on until this situation is resolved. I will, I will live stream from the end of this video, 24 hours a day, um, so people can see completely what's going on on my end. I'm not paying anyone to tell me what they're telling me. I'm not fucking uh, RMTing. I'm not doing whatever. Um, I know most of you will not care at this extent. Uh, however, I, I really just want to remove myself from this equation because I understand I have a pretty big personality. A lot of people have averse opinions about me. Really what I'm trying to stress here, take, uh, look, I'm, this is about TFT. This is about a community tool that has grown into something kind of sick and twisted um, and something that needs to be addressed within the game. Uh, and again, this narrative that, you know, it's, it's devolving into a faction war. This is, this is something that is being done largely by TFT because they're trying to distract from the meat of the, <laughs> of the situation, which is that they are selling items and buying items with real world currency, a clear breach of terms of service from GGG. They have people who are moderators on Reddit. They have people, they have hundreds of thousands of people in their discord. So they have a huge reach, right? Um, they, you know, might have people, I don't know, but the GGG allegations, I'm not even going to touch that because I can't point to anything to prove it. Um, but again, I've got people on the record here that have made transactions with them for real world currency. And these aren't nobody's either. These are the best items in the game. People who have done this over a long record of time, former moderators willing to go on the record. I also have a variety of other people that, that have similar stories or conversations with them. However, um, I haven't, as I said, got their permission to use their names uh, because they don't want to lose their accounts. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to do that to them. So I think this is enough This is enough to kind of at least get the ball rolling. On the very least, merit an investigation on GGG's side. Um, you have a clear item with clear explanations. Uh, and again, this is not a low-key item here. Um, I've also talked to people uh, like uh, Lightwoods, uh, if you're familiar, Lightwoods is like an OG one percenter from Standard who would be very informed with, uh, you know, the operations of these things. And, uh, you know, he's just saying to me, basically, you know, Varga, blah, blah, blah. But the amount of outreach I've had from people in the community, you know, this, oh, here, here's him showing somebody trying from TFT, trying to buy something from him for RMT. He says here, I, re I reported him to TFT. He's still around there. You can send, then see as soon as he started talking to me, he was banned from TFT. Again, these are people that have been around, whether or not you'd like any one of these people individually, these are people that have been around the community for a very long time um, that are, are legitimately being silenced because of you know what is being posted here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's just do a little quick recap here. Um, Number one, I realize that this has kind of devolved into a narrative about me versus them. Whatever you're willing, whatever you're wanting to say about me, I accept. Um, and you know, regardless of how malicious or, or untrue it is in reality, fine. I take take me away from that. Let's try to focus on the issue at hand here: is that the most ubiquitous community tool um, in Poe uh, is being used as a market to launder. Uh, basically launder currency, funnel resources, manipulate markets. Um, and as I said, you want to talk about uh, the inflation kind of stuff. Um, we looked on the market there and there were 15 mirrors for sale. Janubu then links 249 of them. Obviously, <laughs> not only does that speak to the effect that they have from these mirror services, but as well as their capacity to manipulate markets at any given time. Um, the only reason he has that many mirrors on him and that they're not RMT, uh, as we showed on uh, uh, PoE Ninja, is because they just bought every single one of them, probably to disprove or try to discredit this ahead of time. Um, we've got the co-crafters of the best item in the game uh, and the most mirrored item in the game, both on record saying that they RMT'd it uh, and sold it directly to TFT, um, and both of them on record as saying that they've done this in the past. Uh, so take that. Um, what else do we have? We have a, a TFT moderator agreeing with the validity of everything I said in the previous video, uh, saying that it was all true, explaining the hierarchy, as well as saying the thing about the Reddit mods. We have the fact that TFT preemptively 
changed their status yesterday before I released that video saying that Belton was about to release a smear campaign against them. Um, if there was no merit to what I was saying, they would just ignore it. The fact that they've so heavily fought against this, I think lends credence to the, the, the claims more so than it does dismiss them. Um, they have proactively started to discourage people from listening or associating with me uh, by banning them from TFT, uh, by banning me and my ability to discuss th anything with anyone. Um, they've done this for me now on Twitch. I've been to platform there. I've had my voice taken away there, my 7,000 hours of VODs. I was now just permanently banned from Reddit Path of Exile. Um, you know, anyone who supports me financially has now been um, banned uh, and denied access from TFT. Anyone who is now in my guild is now denied access with me or to access to TFT. Um, as well as the people that uh, have been around in the community that are willing to speak out are now being banned and denied access to TFT. I think that all of these things combined paint a pretty clear picture here, guys. Um, and regardless of what you might think about my motivations, uh, I am I, willing to go on record. I'm willing to go stream all my shit to prove that I don't really give a fuck about... And, like, I want the game to be better, and I know that how this is making the game worse. Um, and whether or not you believe me, I'm willing to, uh, you know possess the courage of my convictions in that I, I will stream my gameplay as soon as this is done until the situation is resolved or until T uh, GGG looks into it. Um, I'm willing to not have any share in this. I will, I will refuse any mirror services of anyone that crap, anyone's items that are not mine. Um, and <clears throat> if a community tool is developed and Janubu and the people associated are rightfully banned as they should be, um, I, I don't want any share of that and nor will I, allow my discord to be morphed into something that is similar to tft um i know it sounds like this is maybe me being dramatic a lot of people have come by and said why am i you know why am i creating drama where it doesn't need to exist um i don't think that anything in life like the the meaning the meaning behind a pursuit should not be diminished by the expectation of outcome you know what i mean like Nobody would ever achieve anything in the world if they didn't go after it because of the likelihood of failure. I understand that there's a lot of things that are stacked against me here, uh, not the least of which is what people think of me as a person. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I, I love this game and I want this game to improve. And um, wh whether or not I'm involved in that is really irrelevant to me. And, uh, you know, now that I've opened Pandora's box here, um, I'm willing to you know, put my money where my mouth is in that respect um, and, and remove myself from the equation. Um, please, uh, if, if, you know, if this video has done anything for you, um, <clears throat> I know some people have reached out to GGG, you know, maybe on Twitter saying investigate this. Um, you know, some people have written emails to them. Uh, some people have made Reddit posts, whatever it is. I, I really think that uh, the it's kind of the time has come, right? Everyone's always sort of known this is in place. Um, why is this situation different than any other time people have accused them of it? No other time ever has re has TFT uh, pre-released basically a press release. Um, a press release on their own site. Oh, excuse me, sorry, my voice is dry. Um, again, before, my even, before even my last video was public, uh, they came out saying I was going to release a smear campaign. Uh, they've then tried to discredit my character and my person. One, the one thing that they've not called me in any one of their little posts uh, is a liar. <laughs> you know, you, you can try and throw all these other buzzwords around to discredit <clears throat> uh, me as a person, but not one of them has to do with any of the claims actually made in the video. There's now, um, again, a public record of this. Uh, I, I Yeah, so what makes this different, again, is the fact that TFT actually gave credence to this by addressing it prior to me even going public. Um, they've then proactively tried to silence people uh, who are associated with me. Uh, they're trying to, basically, they're trying to bully people into um, not, you know what I mean? Like, if you side with what Belton's saying here, um, you're going to suffer the consequences. And for a lot of people, TFT as a tool is an essential part of their gameplay, or they perceive it to be as such. I would, I would argue that because I haven't used TFT in four leagues, and, um, you know, I, I make quite a bit, quite a bit of money myself. So, uh, it's really just a comfort thing, I think, but I understand that the value that it has for a lot of people, and I'm not trying to dismiss that. And I actually do think the community tool aspect of it should stick around. Um, but again, obviously, 
a, 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 an innocent person does not go around trying to silence their 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 uh, you know detractors. It's like you just sort of shrug and nod it off. Um, I, and I think that what has transpired over the past twenty five hours. Another thing I didn't really mention. Um, you know, people. I I can't prove this is anyone from G, from uh, from TFT, so I'm not even making that allegation. Uh, however, I've got some. Uh, you know the the two the two factor authentication. Uh, I've got that on my uh, my Google, my Discord, uh, my bank account, strangely, my Instagram, um, and my website. So I don't know. Maybe if I showed my email in a video or something, and somebody tried to go on those to fuck with me or just troll with me, uh, but you know, it's been a little bit of a stressful 24 hours. I'm trying to not wrap myself up in, in this as much as I can. Um, obviously, you know, I have a personal investment here in terms of, um, you know, nobody likes being called a liar. Nobody likes being called the, the variety of different adjectives that have been used to describe me. Um, but regardless, even if you want to give weight to those, um, I don't think it takes away from the merit of what I'm saying. I think the community as a whole deserves better. Um, and I think that there's more than enough information here to at least merit investigation into these the claims um, as well. I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you <clears throat> to the people that are willing to go on record because uh, you have to recognize that by the people doing this, they are accepting that their accounts are most likely going to be banned. They are, you know, a lot. a lot of these guys have put a lot of time and effort um, sometimes years in, in cases uh, of effort into this game. This is why I've never RMT'd. One of the big reasons I put way too many hours in, I, I wouldn't want to risk my account, right? Um, these guys recognize that TFT is fucked up. You, you saw in the messages, both of them kind of hate it as an organization. They just use it because it's the most convenient way. Um, and they're willing to put their own accounts on the line. Uh, I think that, you know, we owe it to people like that, whether or not they've made mistakes with RMTing in the past that were to the detriment to the community. You know they're now willing to, to to risk all the effort that they've put in because they know as i know that we deserve better um and that you know uh ggg really i think has to act here um if they don't presented all of this information um uh, it's basically an open invitation on their part for people to break terms of service it's setting a terrible precedent and not to mention on, on the bottom line side on the business perspective uh, why would you ever want to, um, why would you ever want to, uh, allow RMTing when stash tabs are one of your primary sources of income, right? Why would anyone ever buy stash tabs if they can just RMT, like they would get a currency tab and then they can just RMT the currency. Why would you spend a hundred dollars in stash tabs? You can spend a hundred dollars on currency, like just buying the currency outright. Right? There's no need to sell items to slow down and do the process of trading if you can just buy that currency. Right? If GGG does not act on this kind of thing, and if it becomes so obvious that it's pervasive in the community, all it does is incentivize people to be more bold in those pursuits. And the more people that do it, the harder it is to track them down. So I think GGG needs to send a message here. I think there's more than enough evidence. Um, you've got the names, the dates, and the people involved. Um, and I really hope that there's some action here. And again, um, I will remove myself from from the equation here. I don't want I don't want to benefit from this. I want the community to. Uh, sorry again, guys, about the rambling nature of this video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much to the guys that um, have you know supported me through this. Uh, you know, the, especially the people on uh, the patrons and stuff. Um, you know, obviously my my uh, <clears throat> website costs money to to run, and uh, uh, you know I was demonetized obviously by having my Twitch channel taken away. Uh, as well, a lot of these videos get demonetized because of YouTube content or, or sounds or whatever. So uh, I do I do appreciate that. And uh, you know the people that have not escaped the Discord, a couple hundred people left the Discord under the threat from TFT. Uh, for those of you who have stuck around out of principle, uh, I appreciate that as well. Uh, and you know what? Regardless if you uh, agree with me or not, here I'm not going to remove anyone's comments. If you disagree with anything I've said or you think there's no merit to it, please express your opinion. Uh, dissenting opinions and plurality of thought are important in developing dialogues and progressing narratives. So um, I welcome any criticisms here. I feel like uh, I've said what I need to say. Uh, God bless, guys. Hope you have a great time in the game, and uh, we'll see how this uh, unfolds further. Cheers.